उलुरकार वो गोयेकार पाय गोयचो गोर जावई मुंडो ताऊ गोयेकार झालो पायचो गाव मेंगलोर मुंडो ताऊ मुंगलुरचो झालो बस मोजी गोयेकारांची तोराव गोयेकार झालो आवे पाय माईची जोगडी पोळो नवो दो पिसो झालो I've been born and brought up in Goa, uh, at least till uh, I was 21, 22. So uh, b back then, Goa was obviously very much different than what it is now. But for us, Goa is a place as a home. It is a place where we've, uh, you know, adventured. We've uh, we've gone on picnics. We've gone on outings. We've lived here. We've studied here. We've lived a lot of our lives here, and I think uh, it is still remains an amalgamation of a lot of uh, of different kinds of worlds that come together here. And I think that is the most important part about Goa. But there is a very peaceful coexistence of people of different faiths, cultures, communities, and uh, you know we've always seen a, a a lot of migration of people into 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 the state. So I think we've we've generally been a very peaceful, uh, uh, accommodating, and welcoming. In fact, more than accommodating, I think it's been a very welcoming kind of a of a place. So I think you know all of us, and you see that jolly nature in, in, in its people and I think that becomes the identity of this place. <laughs> okay, so probably <laughs> one zero <laughs> probably and you know we have that oft repeated term uh, called Susagad uh, while there has been a, a wholesome misinterpretation of that word. It is really about uh, about not being a part of a rat race. It's about uh, it's about feeling the satisfaction of what you have done, and sitting back and reflecting and enjoying that of what you have done through the day in your in your week in your in your life. So I think you know these set of things and that you see in uh, the Goans, I think that becomes the identity and that's what for me also is about Goa.
I've been doing a lot of jobs, but I was never satisfied. Working for a bank, working for uh, network companies and all. I was never satisfied. Then finally I took a line which made me happy, uh, which was cabbing around. In other words, we say I became a taxi driver. And um, yes, contacted a lot of travel agencies and all. And uh, I was told to like, you know, take people for sightseeing in South Goa, North Goa and all. But since I was born in a village, Hindi mein bolte hai na, gaonwala. So I'm, I'm a villager. And in my childhood, I have done a lot, a lot, a lot of village masti, naughtiness. Like going and jumping in the pond, climbing coconut trees, robbing the neighbor's mangoes and all sort of thing. And it was there in my mind that I should do something. So whenever I will get a call to take some guest out for sightseeing, I try to meet the guest in the lobby of the hotel and try to recognize them whether they will like what I have in my mind and I have actually taken them into the hinterland and not took them to the churches and beaches and, and the boat cruise. I think the local beat really is about connecting people with nature and with people who are extremely happy to invite you into their world. Uh, why I started the local beat and what I wanted out of it for people is there are so many different versions of Goa that exist. We have uh, successfully uh, created a, a beach tourism culture uh, you know, dating back to several, uh, you know, uh, 40, 50 years. But uh, I think that was one representation or one part of Goa alone. But there is also so many other, there is the village version, there is the hippies version, there is the foodies version, there is the boho version, uh, there is the hinterland version, so, uh, you know, there's the, you know, and even when you talk of the different faiths that exist, that thrive within the state, there are so many different cultures, food, music. I think most people have not been exposed to the rest of what Goa has to offer. You know, I joined Mac for his idea and joined Local Beat. Probably, I think. I joined Local Beat from day one. And we started this Local Beat. Now, what we do in Local Beat, we try to take people to the village. Look at it, or diagonally opposite the coastline, we've got the hinterlands, uh, which is part of the Great Western Ghats. It's abundant with waterfalls, forests, lakes, streams. because it allows you to disconnect from your everyday routine life. It also allows you to uh, be in the abundance of nature where you don't have crowds, noise, uh, that you would see on the more commercialized side of Goa. So that, I think, is what I wanted to uh, highlight uh, through the local beat.
when it comes to walking in the forest, when it comes to going in the water, when it comes to cliff jumping, there are people who does not even know to swim, have got phobia of water, have jumped from 20 feet also. You know, that much of trust we create. Then it starts working with the top. Come crispy, now it's still soft. Now crunch it, and I will put it in the mouth. Bite into it. Just taking in the smell, but you stand, you'll see it better. Yeah. Very Come, nice. sir. The casuals that we buy from the package is oil, yeah? Oh, completely stripped off it. So Even the flavoring the comes from the oil, yeah? The clove, when you're buying clove. Mm. Oh, it smells so good. Come on. If you think they were good drinkers, you can do it twice or twice. <laughs> if they were not drinkers, they can start from today. Okay. After that, after you have done satisfied them, you can transfer the or shift the glass in your right hand, raise it up high and say Viva Goa. That means cheers Goa. And if you wish, you can cheer local beat also. Twice or twice, yeah. as I have said. Hi. And sprinkle it then behind you. We will transfer Goa. the glass in your right hand. The glass has to be in your right hand. Raise it up high and Come say, Viva Goa. Viva Goa. Local beat has created such a cocktail that when you taste it, you will come back to Goa, not to tour Goa, but to drink Fedi. The other thing that's happening is you're seeing so many different versions of offering Fedi, whether it's to the cocktails that have come up now and a lot of the restaurants uh, and food places offered uh, have made it a must-have. Uh, it definitely sits on the menu pretty prominently. Feni for us is something very, very important. Like for us, go on without fast, fast meant fist, without Feni, without football and without fish, we are not going. When you have such a huge number of visitors to Goa, uh, it, in, it invariably changes the character of that place. Of course, with tourism, the prices also go up. Uh, sometimes it becomes, un, un, it, it leads to it being difficult for even locals to uh, access some basic food requirements. But uh, 
So that I think has now, I think we're seeing a, a, a change happening with the uh, tourism department of Goa uh, giving impetus to hinterland tourism. My only hope and prayer is that with the, with the impetus given to hinterland tourism, that we do it in a mindful manner because we can't afford to see more places being marked out saying, yeah, ye to bahut, uh, crowded hai, ye to goa lagta hi nahi hai. For some people, of course, it is, it, that's how they look at it. And yes, yeah, because I have I myself seen a lot of places, a lot of Goans themselves do not go to certain places because they are very crowded. Uh, you tend to get crowds that are boorish. Uh, so, you know, there is there are, the, are those kind of uh, issues that will crop up when you have such a huge uh, number of uh, people coming into the state. On social media where uh, people tag locations, I'm very sure they're not here to democratize tourism. Uh, as much as it is about garnering uh, likes and uh, followers. But here is a very, uh, very, very pointed question to people who do that. And I just hope they tend to be far more mindful uh, here on, uh, is you ask the local around if she or he or they or the community is okay about, about their location being tagged. And I can assure you nobody likes it because you cannot control who goes there how many go there, how often they go there, and what they do there. Despite the uh, over-commercialization of tourism, despite the fact that Goa has become one bazaar of, of, of properties to buy for people, we still have retained a lot of what Goa has been, if I may call it the DNA of Goa, through and through. And, and you know, it's, it's, it exists in pockets, it exists in large places uh, spread around. You see so many different worlds coming together in this small, tiny state. And, you know, I see them as little clouds that, or little bubbles that float around and none of them clash into each other. And, and we've lived that way. <laughs> 